This is Angelus TV, God's voice that brings hope to the nations. Praise the Lord. And I'm so excited to meet you once again as we begin this new series on the power of forgiveness. This series, the day that it was born in my spirit to teach, I had a very ugly instant with a friend. And the thing that was there was I had the choice to forgive him or not to forgive him. I had a choice to look at the magnitude of damage he had brought on me, or he had brought up on my reputation, or to, to understand the Bible principles and forgive him. So there was a war raging between me. Should I forgive? Should I hold resentment against him? But man, you know what? We are wise enough. The, where the Apostle Paul puts it, we are not ignorant of the schemes of the enemy. The enemy's desire is to put a wage against brethren and a wage between brethren. He, his desire is to put a wage between fathers and their children, mothers and their children, husbands and wives, leaders and the led. Whether it is in a church or in the government, the desire of the devil is to put a wedge between people so that there is resentment and bitterness. But we have a choice because the Lord has been so, and the Bible is uh, you know, full of evidence and of examples of men and women who went through so much, yet they still had room in their hearts to forgive those who wronged them. When I talk about this among humans, I'll remember Joseph, that son of Jacob, and how that his brothers hated him, falsely accused him, came up with a, with a plan to kill him, threw him into the ditch, picked him up from the ditch, and sold him to the, to the Egyptian slave master, who later gave him to someone else as a slave to Potiphar. You all know the story of Joseph. Joseph suffered that rejection, suffered false accusation, for, you know, suffered from hatred, and he was put in prison for something he never did. And even in prison, he was able to interpret the dreams of the two guys. And the guy that was set free could not even remember Joseph. He couldn't remember Joseph. And it took time before he remembered Joseph and then Joseph was brought into Pharaoh's house and then finally he became the second in command in Egypt. And you remember that when he was the second man in command, famine was all over the world. And his brothers, the accusers, the men who sold him, who had even thought in their minds that he, their brother was dead. They come to Egypt for food and they find him. He did not use his position to revenge. He forgave his brethren, and as a result, he saved the entire household of Israel. So we, you may have reasons why you think you should not forgive. Don't you think Joseph had a reason why he, he shouldn't have even thought about forgiving his brothers? Because their action separated him from his brethren. Their actions, you know, put him from, you know, you know, cause him to move from a freed child in the house to become a slave to be purchased and to be used like an animal. But yet in his heart, he had a place to forgive. The Bible has, and then he, you know, Joseph just says, you intended for evil, but God intended it for good. Are you aware that most of these things that you suffer from people, the devil intends, the purpose of the devil is evil, but God is going to turn it for your good. Hasn't he said in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, hasn't he said that God will cause all things to work for good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Because you love God, you forgive people. Because you love God, you do the purpose of God. God never sends us on planet earth to hate people. 
Not even those vicious enemies of ours, those self-proclaimed enemies who plan evil and who are always foul-mouthed against us. But we must forgive them. So to go back to the story that I was telling you, the day I finished putting together the notes for this thing, I was tempted in the same when a very close friend did me harm. And I can tell you for sure he was not the one. Because I know this brother. He's an amazing, wonderful brother. But the enemy, seeing what we were going to do together as a team, he wanted to put a wedge. But guess what? Both me and the brother were so wise enough and we did outwit the devil and we forgave and we became, we are great friends in the team going to do great things for the kingdom of God. I don't know why you are holding on to something that someone did. I don't understand why you let it torment you. Friend, it is easier to let go than to hold on to that poison. Because that poison is not poisoning the person, it is poisoning you. There are so many sicknesses and diseases and medical conditions that come as a result of unforgiveness. Because of bitterness in your heart, you, 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 you are always having, you know, you, you are, you are, your heart under pressure, your emotions are tense, everything within you, you destroy the body chemistry as God designed it. And so you can so easily develop insomnia, you can so easily develop uh, migraines, you can so easily develop ulcers, you can so easily become a mental person, you can sink into depression, you can have, through, you can have so many things. And one of the worst things is you fall into party, into pity party. You, you take all your life, you spend all, that, all your life just pity partying thinking about yourself, thinking about how they were this and how they were that to you. This series of teaching, I want to lay this foundation for you to understand the importance of forgiveness. Because if you don't understand the importance of forgiveness, then you, you will never live your life. Then actually you are not a Christian because we are Christians because we have been forgiven. And as I conclude today's introduction, I just want us to revisit the Lord's Prayer. When you read the Lord's Prayer, when you look at the Lord's Prayer, what do we, what do we learn? You know, Jesus taught us how to pray. And he said, when you go to prayer, pray like this. He says, you pray and say, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory forever and ever. So we have this message from the Lord in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. Our Father who is in heaven. If we are going to our Father who is in heaven, whom the Bible says he is full of mercy, always forgiving. If indeed we are created in the image and likeness of God, and if indeed he dwells in us, we must have the same attributes like God and we must forgive as he forgave. And that is why Jesus giving us the model of prayer where he tells us whenever we go to pray, the first thing is to worship God. He says, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the first thing is worship God. As you go into prayer, don't just jump before, don't jump, jump before in, in the presence of God and so that way I want money, I want this money, I don't know. That's not how. You have got to show courtesy in the presence of God. Yesterday we spent time with young people here teaching them the, the etiquette and courtesy of a Christian. And that is exactly what we do even before our Heavenly Father. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Oh God, let your name be glorified. You are so wonderful. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. Oh God, give us this day our daily bread. And then he says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Here is a question. Do you think you need God's forgiveness? The answer must be yes. If you think you don't need, require God's forgiveness, then you are in deception. And I just ask you to climb down from that false self-righteous pulpit and fall at the feet of Jesus and repent. Even for that pride and deception that you don't deserve, you, you, don't, you don't need the forgiveness of God. And God you know, he, he, he tells us, you know, he, he's so gracious. You know, he says, if we confess our sins, he is just and righteous to forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all acts of unrighteousness. In the book of Psalm 103, the scripture says, bless the Lord, O my soul, bless the Lord, and don't forget any, and forget not the, any one of his benefits because he forgives all your sins and he heals all your diseases. Are you aware that some of the diseases that you, are, you could be suffering today are because you haven't forgiven? And I have witnessed to this. I will share with you the stories of these things that we are talking about. And I'm so happy that this teaching that I'm sharing on forgiveness is something that I consider, it is, I consider to be very, very important in my life. Because if I, did, if I had not learned forgiveness, I would have fallen even from salvation. If I did not impress forgiveness, I would have not had any trust for people. If I did not Embrace forgiveness. And let me tell you, it, is, it didn't just come easily. There, there has been a battle between the me that, doesn't, that is natural and the me that is of God. And sometimes the me that is natural wants to overcome and say, why would you forgive him? And yet he did this and yet he did that. But I've come to realize the greatest liberty in life lies in forgiving other people. He says, forgive us our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. There are people who are doing, who are doing bad things and there are people who have just decided to be naggy on us. Just forgive them. Leave as though they don't exist. Commit them in the hands of the Lord. Pray the blessing of the Lord over their lives. And you just move on and do what you're supposed to do. And it's going to be a blessing in your life. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. And we thank you for reminding us of the power and the place of forgiveness in our lives. We give you praise, God, and we give you glory. Let this teaching bless each one of us. And this morning, let each one of us that has listened to this message walk understanding that we need to forgive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this broadcast. For more of such uplifting Christian content, please click subscribe. Click the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another broadcast. Thank you and God bless you.